So in this video lecture, I'm going to talk about another important genus, Hymenolepis, under the family Hymenolepidae. So throughout this lecture, I'm going to talk about morphological features, life cycle, pathogenic significance, clinical manifestation, and diagnosis of Hymenolepiasis, that is, the infection caused by Hymenolepis nana and Hymenolepis diminuta. So where we are, we are here. Uh, we'll discuss two important parasites, Hymenolepis nana and Hymenolepis diminuta under the genus Hymenolepis and under the family Hymenolepidae. Hymenolepis nana, this parasite is also known as dwarf tapeworm. And this parasite is located uh, in the small intestine of rodents, simian primers, and man. Hymenolepis diminuta, these are also found in the small intestine of rodents and man. The intermediate uh, host for these two parasites are flea, flower beetles, cockroach, and different other insects. The metacystor for both of the parasite is cysticercoid. So when I talked about uh, dipalidium caninum infection in dog and also in man, in that lecture, I discuss about the flea. And so these are the tiny uh, ectoparasites that are mostly available in the stored food products, particularly in the flower, wheat, and different other grains. Sometimes, Cockroach can act as the intermediate host for the completion of life cycle of these two parasites. Morphological features of Hymenolepis nana or Hymenolepis diminuta. First, have a look at this picture. So you can see a tiny thread-like structure here. So these are actually the parasite Hymenolepis nana or Hymenolepis diminuta. And in this picture, you can see there are four suckers and on top of this structure there is a uh, cone-shaped structure which is also known as rostellum and if you look at uh, this structure very closely you can see there are little or tiny structure on it so these are the hooks and if you look at this picture you can see there are some hooks on the rostellum but for hymenolepis diminuta you can see the suckers but on the rostellum, there is no hooks. So this parasite is a small to medium size thread-like tapeworm. It ranges 2.5 to 6 centimeter in length. For Hymenolepis nana, it is 2.5 to 4 centimeter. And due to their smaller sizes, they are also known as dwarf tapeworm. And for Hymenolepis diminuta, it is 2 to 6 centimeter. And like other sea stores, they possess four suckers on the uh, scolex and there is a retractable rostellum bearing a single circle of hooks but remember there is no hooks on the rostellum in case of hymenolepis diminuta and single set of genital organs in each of the proglotid and genital openings of genital pores are unilateral life cycle of hymenolepis species that is life cycle of either Hymenolepis nana or Hymenolepis diminuta. For Hymenolepis nana, the life cycle is direct. That is, there is no involvement of intermediate host. For Hymenolepis diminuta, the life cycle either direct or indirect. That is, the life cycle can be completed without intermediate host or with the intermediate host. And you have seen this information in my earlier slide. So these are the parasite, the final host of these parasites uh, are different rodents, simian primers, and men for Hymenolepis nana, and for Hymenolepis diminuta, it is rodents and men. And this parasite will be found in the small intestine of these final host, and intermediate hosts are different flea, flower beetles, cockroach, and different other insects. The, uh, the cysticercoid for this uh, parasites is cysticercoid and time required for the completion of the life cycle is three to six weeks but the minimum time is three weeks. 
So the parasite will be found in the small intestine of the final host. And from the small intestine, the eggs or the gravid proglotid can be released through the feces. And these eggs can survive in the environment for around 10 days and they can contaminate the food water. And the final host, if it is a direct life cycle, final host can be infected after ingestion of this uh, contaminated food water with the eggs of this parasite. And these eggs will reach to the small intestine. They will have to produce a hexacanth embryo. This hexacanth embryo will penetrate the villi of the small intestine. And in the, in the villi, they will develop to cystisarcoid larvae. And afterwards, this cystisarcoid larvae will come back to the lumen of the intestine, uh, that is through penetration. And they will become a mature parasite and will start producing gravid proglotid or eggs. But in case of the indirect life cycle, these eggs will be ingested by different intermediate hosts that I have already mentioned. And in the body of the intermediate host, metacystoid, that is cystisarcoid, will be developed. And the final host will be infected after ingestion of insects having cystisarcoid in their body. Uh, so the transmission, you can uh, closely look at this, look at here, the transmission that is transmission by the accidental ingestion of the insect having cystisarcoid. So this insect will be uh, will contaminate your food. Sometimes if you take food, uh, take raw food or pre-cooked uh, pre cereals or stored products, in that case, you may be infected with this parasite. So uh, in this situation, the cystisarcoid in the body of the uh, insect will reach to the small intestine and they will release the cystisarcoid. This cystisarcoid will penetrate the villi of the small intestine and they will become cystisarcoid larvae. And similarly, this cystisarcoid larvae come back to the lumen of the small intestine to become a mature parasite through penetration. And within a few days, the uh, cystisarcoid larva will develop to mature parasite and start producing eggs. There is another alternative way of uh, completion of life cycle. So rather than passing through the passing the gravid proglotid or eggs through the feces, these eggs will remain in the small intestine. And afterwards, the, these eggs will hatch to produce hexacanth embryo. And these hexacanth embryo will penetrate the villa of the small intestine will become cystisarcoid larvae and afterward this cystisarcoid larvae will come back to the small intestine through the penetration of those villi and they will become mature parasite afterwards so this sort of uh, mode of infection is called intestinal auto infection that is rather than passing the eggs through the feces they will stay in the small intestine of the final host and from those eggs, the life cycle will be continued and a mature parasite will be produced afterwards. And the minimum time required for the completion of this life cycle is around three weeks, but it may even longer, around five to six weeks. Pathogenic significance and clinical sign. I have already mentioned that infection caused by these two parasites that is Hymenolepis nana or Hymenolepis diminuta it is called Hymenolepiasis so if a man is uh, suffering from light infection in that case there is no clinical sign and symptoms that is called asymptomatic infection but in case of the heavy infection some non-specific abdominal symptoms can be found that is anorexia, vomition diarrhea and abdominal pain uh, in case of the rodent for the light infection the infection uh, is asymptomatic but for the heavy infection uh, retardation of the growth weight loss and enteritis can be seen so the diagnosis of hymenolepiasis based on clinical sign is really really hard to diagnose 
uh, this parasitic infection. So for confirmatory diagnosis, definitely we should go for coproscopy. In coproscopical examination or feces examination, you have to identify a characteristics X for hymenodopis nana or diminuta. Uh, for both of the eggs, the shape is oval shape and there are three pairs of hook in the oncosphere. You can see three pairs of hook in the oncosphere. Even you can see in this egg and in this uh, eggs. And there are some other special characteristics that is only present in case of the hymenodopis nana. So you can see a dark spot in this side and another dark spot in this side. And from this dark, spot, dark spots, there are two fibers uh, from this side and another side. And the same characteristics is um, also applicable for the other side. So this dark spot is also known as polar body. And this actually helps in the penetration of the intestinal villi that I have already uh, discussed in the life cycle of uh, these two parasites and so uh, this uh, structure the, uh, so okay so fiber like a structure this is called polar filament and these two structure is only present in case of the hymenolepis nara and this is absent in case of hymenolepis diminuta but in real life scenario it's really difficult to see these two structure under microscope under microscope so you have to take the decision based on the size and the shape. So we already know that the shape is oval shape for both of the eggs, but what about their size? Hymer, the eggs of Hymenolepis nana is smaller compared to the eggs of Hymenolepis diminuta. It almost, the, uh, the eggs of Hymenolepis nana is almost the uh, half size of uh, the eggs of Hymenolepis diminuta okay so that's it so these are the books that I have used during preparation of this presentation and I have also used a lot of uh, open source information from internet YouTube different other sources and thank you all for enjoying this video good luck with your study